What's up guys, back with another giveaway video here at Leroy and Lewis. But first, a couple things. I wanna say we're going to be at Jester King's Funkin' Sour coming up next week. It is gonna be a ton of fun. It's always one of the best industry events. There's some of our favorite restaurants there, favorite breweries and local wineries there. It's uh, kind of a small enough event to where it is just a ton of fun. We don't have to make too much food. We get to hang out with all of our friends and some of the best people in Austin. We are also starting this new series with Kevery. This charcoal oven smoker cooker, uh, super versatile. It's this kind of new backyard kind of box shaped cooker. It is really versatile and really awesome and a ton of fun to cook on. We're doing a series with them, kind of an l, &L at home series. We're gonna do four videos with them in a couple different modes with their charcoal oven. There's like a hotter version, there's a kind of smoker version, there's like a pretty classic baking version, and then there's a pizza version. So we're gonna be making some pizza out there too. And we are gonna do a giveaway of some Kevery merchandise as well this week. So stay tuned after this first l, &L at home with Kevery video for that giveaway. Would you look at this smoked and tomato braised pork shank. I made right here at my house in my driveway on a Kevery H1. I'm gonna show you how to make everything, including the tomato braise, the pumpkin seed gremolata, and the Parmesan mascarpone grits. We are in my home kitchen, where we actually kind of started Leroy and Lewis. Fun fact, for the first couple months of the food truck, we did all the prep, including half hog breakdown, all the beef tallow confiting in this kitchen, in that oven, in this space right here. So we are actually starting a new series, l, l at home is what I'm calling it. And we're gonna try to make some of the new dishes that we're featuring at the restaurant in my home kitchen, for your home kitchen. The first one we're gonna start with is gonna be this pork shank. We are doing some new features on the dinner menu and one of them is this pork shank. We are taking all the shanks off of the peaceful pork hogs. We're seasoning them with salt, pepper, garlic, and some fennel. We're smoking them and then we're doing a pretty simple tomato braise, serving them with a Parmesan and mascarpone grits. To kick off this series, I'm gonna be using the Kevery H1. It's a pretty sweet charcoal oven that is really versatile and you're gonna see how versatile it is over the course of a few videos here at my house in this kitchen and cooking with the Kevery out front of my driveway. Okay, let's uh, get started on the recipe. First thing I'm gonna do is get this pork shank seasoned up. Here I've got a seasoning blend of salt, pepper, granulated garlic, and ground toasted fennel seed. Just kinda wanted a pretty basic SPG kinda style rub here but also just give it a little bit of Italian flair because that is what we are going for with this tomato braise. Gonna go just pretty heavy on the seasoning. Pretty much anything we're gonna be barbecuing, we need to go heavy on the seasoning. We're not really gonna get another chance to season it really well on the inside. We wanna create a nice crust, create a nice bark. So anything that we're smoking, for the most part, we're gonna go nice and heavy on the seasoning. And this smells incredible. That fennel and garlic really coming together. This is almost kind of smelling like a porchetta. I think at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do is make this kind of look like a Thor's hammer. Uh, see if it'll stand up on the final plate, but not today. This is the Kevery H1. It's a black truffle color that they have. Very sleek, very pretty. It's a beautiful machine. Basically, it's a charcoal oven, right? So the lid flips down. It's got these latches that close. It's got some nice sturdy, grates they kind of roll a little bit but they're going to be nice and sturdy they're going to get nice and hot and give us nice uh, grill marks if we desire that there's a few different locations for our grates top bottom and middle and then i mean it's pretty deep too so you can at least fit a couple racks of ribs you can definitely fit your whole thanksgiving turkey you can fit a couple of briskets in there. I mean, it's got a bunch of different modes too. We'll talk about that in a second, but you can bake your bread in here. You can do your pizzas in here. You can do all kinds of pork butts and barbecue. So we're gonna be going through all the different modes during these four videos. Bottom opens up here. This whole apparatus pulls out. So this is where you're gonna put your charcoal or your wood. It's also got a little ashtray here. And then to control airflow, we have this little chimney. It's got our kind of four, which was wide open, a little bit closed off, a little bit more closed off. 
completely closed off. And then we have another vent on this side. So the things I like about this oven are that it is nice and sleek. It's insulated really well. I like that there is no kind of other different apparatus. There's no plug-in factor here. It is all gonna be live fire cooking. And that's what I like to do. So I'm excited to fire this thing up and cook a pork shank. So I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna dump about two to three pounds of charcoal in here, kind of right in the middle. So we've got a few pounds of charcoal in here. Just gonna drop a couple of fire starters, get them going. The lighting instructions say to close it and then open the top, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna let this get lit, about 10 minutes. And then once the charcoal is nice and ashy, we'll put our grates in, we'll close it up, we'll put our pork shank on, and we'll put a couple wood chunks on too. All right, our charcoal is nice and ashed over, glowing orange. I'm just gonna throw a couple wood chunks on here and throw our grates in. I think I wanna cook this one on the bottom. Off to the side. Put this over there. Close this thing on up. And I'm going to adjust the air vents. We're gonna go to number two right here. And we're gonna close this down to one. And we should settle right around, it says like 320 to 390. I think I'm looking for about 350. I wanna smoke it pretty hot, get a nice crust on there. And then we will put it in the tomato braise and cover it and put it back in there and it'll braise in there. All right, now with the pork shank in the Kevery smoking away, now we are gonna come in here and make the tomato braise. This is a very simple tomato braise. The key with this recipe, with a lot of things at Leroy and Lewis, is just to keep it simple and execute technique properly. So we're going to open this can of tomatoes, crush them up a little bit, put them in here with some olive oil, some crushed garlic, a little sachet of basil and a little bit of white wine. Then we're just gonna cook that down and let it chill and let it go nice and low and slow uh, until we're ready to braise the pork shank in that nice tomato gravy. Canned tomatoes. If you don't have canned tomatoes in your house right now, what are you even doing with your life? So Matthew Bromley, this is his sauce recipe. He says that you have to make sure you have to squeeze the tomatoes by hand. Uh, and I think that's like an old Italian grandma thing. So I'm gonna get in here and squeeze these by hand and try to make sure that I don't squeeze tomato juice all over my house or myself. But I think this is also going to give our final sauce some really nice body. It's going to give it some nice texture. Really getting in there. Okay, crushed tomatoes, got some olive oil. I'm gonna say, so that was one can of crushed tomatoes. I'm gonna say this is one cup of olive oil. I've got 10 cloves of garlic. These are pretty big. And I'm just gonna crush them a little bit. Wanna be able to pull these out later. That's why I'm trying to keep them pretty big and whole. It smells so good in here already. Crushed garlic in, sachet of basil in, a little bit of white wine, Kirkland's finest in. I'm just gonna put this on the stove on low and let it chill out for a little while. So we lit this thing about 20 minutes ago and it is just cruising right at the temperature we need to put the right amount of charcoal in there, uh, put the dampers where they needed to be and we are right at 375 which is kind of where we want to be. This classic mode kind of ranges from 320 to 390 so I think, whoa, smoke in the eyes. Ugh. So I think 350, 375 is kind of the target temperature that we're looking for. I'm just going to kind of peek at it real quick to see if it looks good. Oh yeah, look at that smokiness, barkiness. Close it back up. All right, just keep rolling. But I noticed right away when I opened this box of this grill, uh, these are really good tongs. These are like really sturdy, really good, high quality tongs. And it's not something that's very easy to come by. A lot of the ones you just buy in any grocery store or like cheaply on Amazon are not good tongs. These are good tongs. One thing that's really nice about this pit, you put the right amount of fuel in there, charcoal in there, it really is kind of a walk away from it. It's like, it just does its thing for a while. All right, pork shank, it's still doing its thing out there, smoking away beautifully. The tomato braise is also low and slow on the stove. Now we're gonna make this gremolata. The idea behind this is it's supposed to be a nice little textured and fresh, herby, 
a nice little zing kind of topping to it. It's gonna have some parsley, some lemon zest and juice, uh, some toasted pepitas, and some toasted fennel seed. Also gonna have some of this crunchy salt and some coarse black pepper in there too. First thing I'm gonna do is toast off this fennel seed and pumpkin seed. Just got a little nonstick skillet, dry skillet. I'm gonna toast these guys off real quick. While those get happy, I'll start to whack down some of this parsley. I'm gonna stop there. There's a few little stemmies in there, but that's all good. Oh yeah, toasted fennel. Smells so good. You can really tell when the fennel seeds are toasted when they start to like pop and uh, when they start to smell really fragrant. A few more run-throughs of this parsley. A little zest our lemons. By that time our seeds will be toasted. Time to zest some lemons here. Oh, this smells so good. Parsley and lemon. Just reminds me of a seafood restaurant. Uh oh, these, I, I heard one popping. Oh yeah, getting very fragrant now. Very fragrant. We used to prep in this kitchen. The floor used to get so dirty, so gross. We got a new stove. We got a new backsplash. We got a new vent hood. We got a new fridge. Destroyed all of those appliances. We got a new dishwasher. We got a new washing machine. Imagine doing like culinary laundry, like dish laundry in a home washer dryer. It was horrible. There we go. Oh yeah, they smell great. There's just a little tiny wisp of smoke. Let me get these ground up. That fennel smells great. Okay, got all my parsley in here. Gonna go in with all my lemon zest, toasted fennel and pumpkin seed, and coarse black pepper, flaky salt. Okay, that's it for the, oh, the gremolata. It smells incredible. That fresh parsley, that lemon zest, the fennel seed and pumpkin seed. Can you see that? That's gonna be a nice little fresh, herby, crunchy, zingy topping for our pork shank. I wanna taste a little bit of it. Mmm. Okay, I have a really good feeling when I open this up that we're gonna be barked up and it's gonna be ready to go into our tomato braise. All right, let's open it up. Still nice and smoky. Look at that bark on there. Salt, pepper, garlic, fennel. Just gonna give it a little probe. 155, 160, that's kind of what we're looking for in order to put it into the braise. It's just got a nice little kind of bark to it. Mostly cooked. We're gonna put it into the braise. It's gonna cook down even more. Okay, with the pork shank off of the kevery, we're not gonna put it in the tomato braise, put it back in the kevery, and then we're just gonna cook it till it's tender. So the tomato braise has cooked down a little bit. The key with uh, this sauce is just to concentrate the flavor. You've got a very simple sauce, just tomato, garlic, basil, a little bit of white wine and olive oil. Just concentrate that flavor a little bit. And then it's just gonna go in there with the pork. It's gonna get all porky and delicious. We're gonna take the top off kind of at the very end and let it get a little bit smoky too. And it's gonna be a delicious braised pork shank. Tomato braise into the pan. It doesn't even need to come up all the way. If you guys can kind of see that there, it's just barely covering it. So there's gonna be a couple different ways that the heat is working in here. There's gonna be some steam in there and we're gonna cover it. And so that steam is gonna get trapped and kind of help it cook a little bit faster. So I'm gonna cover this with foil. We're gonna put it back on the pit. Got a lot of smoke in my face. All right, gonna keep letter doing her thing. Braise down the pork shank. With the pork shank, let's make our Parmesan mascarpone grits to serve with it. Gonna start off with some shallot and garlic. Just going to cook it in a little butter in this pan. To that, we're going to add some milk to boil. Really what I'm looking for on the garlic is just for it to be small. You can cut it down in any way you want. I usually like to cut into slices and then cut those slices into matchsticks and then try to line up those matchsticks and then mince it from there. As far as the shallot goes, I like to take the stem end off and then cut it in half through the root. And then I will peel the first layer of 
skin off of it and then try to at least go one horizontal cut and then a couple cuts across and then mince it uh, pretty small from there. Shallot in the pan. I'm gonna start with some butter, a couple tablespoons, and I'm gonna start cooking this till the butter melts. Vegetables get a little fragrant. All right, I'm just gonna go nice and low to start off with there. Grits or polenta, one of the easiest side dishes to make. Definitely a really good go-to if you don't wanna make your own pasta or kind of whip up some potatoes. You can just do any kind of aromatics and butter or oil or whatever in a pan. Throw some milk or some stock or some cream or a mixture of any flavorful liquid in there. Throw in your cornmeal and you've got yourself some polenta or grits ready to go on the side of whatever you're cooking that night. All right, everybody's starting to get happy over here. Our butter shallots and garlic smells so good. I want to cook this down a little bit. I really don't want a lot of raw garlic taste in the grits. I'm going to kind of try to cook this down, soften everything. Really let everything relax. Low and slow tomato braise. It's not low and slow. It's, we're still cooking like 350 out there, but still takes a long time. Anything on the bone like this, it's worth, worth the wait. Okay, cooked down enough. I'm going to go in with the milk and just let this come up to a boil. A lot of our cornmeal, pretty much it. Right, the milk, butter, garlicky shallot mix is at a simmer. Gonna go in with my cornmeal, stirring the whole time, and it's gonna thicken up pretty fast. Gonna reach over here and season this. Okay, with the grits thickened up, added a little bit of black pepper. Now, it's time for some mascarpone and Parmesan cheeses. Mascarpone's gonna add a nice creaminess. Parmesan, salty, funky, umami. Wanna add these right at the end. Make sure everything gets nice and creamy and melty. I'm just gonna turn off the heat and stir these in. Oh yeah, look at that. Cheesy, gooey, delicious. All right, I'm pretty sure this pork shank's about to be done. We're gonna pull it out and give it a check inside. Normally I just like to use a towel, but since Kevery provided me with these amazing heat gloves, I'm gonna use them. Okay, go inside. Okay, after the smoke and braise, ooh, hot. This thing is temping beautifully, looking incredible. The sauce has really broken down just almost falling off the bone. I don't know if you can see this, but looks perfect. Just barely clinging to the bone. Easy probe right through. Just looks really, really good. Look at that nice bark formation on there still. This is gonna be delicious. Final plate of bringing this dish together. We've got our Parmesan mascarpone grits, nice and creamy, right here in the middle of the plate. This is gonna be good to share too. Nice swoosh. Now, our pork shank, right in the middle, standing up nice and tall. Tomato gravy cooked down really nicely. It's got a good oil content, and it is just so nice and chunky. All that garlic has cooked down completely. And we're just gonna finish with a little bit of our gravy here. A little bit of that oil makes those grits look really cool too. It's that olive oil, a little bit of pork fat. Can't forget the gremolata. I'm gonna let it fall over, just like that. That's good, it's a little bit more sturdy there. Hands on the gremolata, parsley, lemon zest, pumpkin seed, fennel, coarse black pepper, flaky salt. Look at that thing. Look at those creamy grits. Look at that pork shank, the tomato gravy, that gremolata bringing everything together. All right, time for the taste test. See how tender it is. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my God, with all the grits and the tomato gravy. Oh my God, creamy, rich, smoky. Oh my God, this is so good. Nice, perfect dish for fall. Oh God, this is delicious. Mmm. Got a nice little smoke ring on there too. Look at that, this is really good. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna eat this whole thing. Okay, last one, last one. That's over the smoked and tomato braised pork shank with some 
Parmesan mascarpone grits and pumpkin seed gremolata. We're gonna keep doing these l and at home. We're gonna keep doing some content with the Kevery. We've got an event upcoming with it and we're gonna do a few more recipes here as well. And for this week's Patreon giveaway, we have the Kevery heat gloves as just featured in this video. These are for Drew Wilkins. Thank you, Drew, for making excellent backyard barbecue content and for subscribing to the Pitmaster tier of our Patreon. That's the only way you can win giveaways. Subscribe to the Pitmaster tier of our Patreon. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. See you next week.